Okay, a common atheist trope. Common. There's all these different religions. They can all be right, but they can all be wrong. And seemingly this is said in good faith. Seemingly this is said in good faith by a rational human being. Now, the, one of the first things I noticed when I started investigating the major religions, when I was looking for God prior to me becoming a Christian, one of the first things I noticed, and it's the first thing you will notice if you investigate the different claims, the different religious claims with your eyes open, is how thematically similar they all are. Let me say that again, how thematically similar they all are. The first thing you'll notice is the similarities. So whichever atheist coined the phrase, they can't all be right, is wrong. Because they all can be right. And they all have amazing points of agreement on a lot of different subjects. The first thing you will notice if you read these texts with your eyes open is the similar ideas, similar through lines, similar similar ways of, of investigating reality. Another common atheist trope. You don't believe in Zeus, why do you believe in Jesus? Trade juice, Zeus for Jesus. Okay, read some Greek mythology. You act as if Greek mythology, in order to make that statement, you've never read Greek mythology. And you act like Greek mythology is just stories told to what? Uh, Razzle-dazzle children or something with no significance whatsoever. Greek mythology, like almost all mythologies, like almost all major world religions, are an attempt to wrestle, an attempt to give voice and expression to the hidden realities of the world they live in. To the hidden, often psychological realities, and the hidden, often metaphysical realities. They weren't writing stories about thin air. They were writing stories about complicated, complex, hidden, psychological, and metaphysical, theological realities. And those stories have resonance and to, to present day because they grapple with some of the things that are clearly there. Remember the Bible says the things of God are clearly visible in Romans. Clearly visible. So now you say they're not. Well, investigate all the other world religions. Investigate honestly. Open your eyes. They wrestle with some of the same things. They talk often about some of the same ideas and the same principles. There, there are millions of similarities. They can't all be right. Yes, they can. Yes, they can. Because these people are honestly trying to engage with the hidden realities of the world they live in. And they are finding things there to investigate that are clearly there in Greek mythology, as in Christianity. They may come to different conclusions, but they aren't so different. Let's just take, for example, the story of Noah, possibly the least convincing thing in the Bible. And one of the ways an atheist will tell you that it's not true, will say, well, there's hundreds of stories of Noah, and there are. There's the Epic of Gilgamesh, there's hundreds of different flood stories in ancient history. And they're arguing this, this underscores the fact that the Bible version is false. Rather than making the much more wise and learned observation that if there are hundreds of stories of a great flood throughout ancient history, that would seem to point to something deeply true about the idea of a great flood. Why are those stories all there, in other words? They cannot, and the same person will say they can't all, in the, same, in the same debate, will say, look, Noah's false because there are hundreds of stories of a great flood. Same person, 15 minutes later in the same debate, will go, they can't all be right, but they can all be wrong. Not seeming to notice that they all talk about sort of the same thing. Why is the better question. Why? What's the hidden significance? Obviously, something's up. Either it's a deep-seated psychological reality that has something to do with, with the flood, with some form of, you know, maybe that was, you know, really importantly terrifying to people of those days, the idea of a flood, or possibly a lot more likely, they're all indicating something that actually happened, something that actually occurred. That's way more likely. That there was some form of a flood somewhere 
and somebody built the boat. Now, maybe he didn't build an ark and take every animal on the planet into it. That's a little, that's a little spacious. I'm not saying it's not completely impossible, but it's a little out there. But certainly you can see somebody built a flood. I mean, somebody built a boat and survived a flood with, you know, the animals on his farm. That's plausible. And instead of the whole earth being flooded, you know, the known world at the time was flooded because of some great cataclysmic flood. Who knows? The point is there are similar through lines. There are similar things involved in all of the different world religions. And if you open your eyes and investigate honestly, you will see this clearly. Bl William Blake's famous phrase, all religions are one. There's a reason why that phrase resonated, you know, 200 years after he said it. Because if you start investigating the major world religions, it looks surprisingly like they are. If you start investigating with your eyes open, it looks like they are. For example, the Tao Te Ching. About as far away from Christianity as you can possibly get. But the first thing I started reading it to my mom when I was checking out Eastern religions, and she was like, you know, I like this stuff a lot. This sounds a lot like the things Jesus would say. It's the first thing she noticed. She used to be a devout Roman Catholic. She said, this, these things sound a lot like the stuff Jesus would say. And if you go read it, go read the Tao Te Ching. You, you'll go, you know, five pages into it and you'll hear something along the lines of, the, then you can say with all clarity, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And you're like, well, where did I hear that before? That will happen to you a hundred times. Read The Power of Myth by Joseph Campbell. You don't think they can all agree? You don't think they can't all be right? There are themes and through lines throughout all of them that are surprisingly similar from place to place. Surprisingly similar from tradition to tradition. Even something like, you know, I remember reading about the Dharmic principles in, I guess it was the Bhagavad Gita. I don't remember exactly which, where they came from. One of the Sanskrit scriptures. They would talk about the Dharmic principles. And I was like, God, those are surprisingly similar to what was said over here. You read Emerson. Even read secular people who are wrestling with cosmic questions. Read Emerson, and he starts talking about the oversoul. And it sounds surprisingly like the cosmic consciousness in this tradition over here. A lot of people thought he called it from a source. Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. The point is they all start to talk about, they're all talking about some of the same things. Some of the same resonant themes throughout all of them. A through line throughout all of them. Now, the difference with Christianity, 